basically look after the HV and LV network and also the fibre optic network uh, which Imus has got uh, quite a lot of around the company. My job involves looking after making sure the overhead lines are all in working order, running new fibre optic links um, or any maintenance work, any new installations, do surveys of the overhead lines once a year, install new network and we also uh, are on call with any, if they get any problems uh, you know, during the day or at night. Yeah, I would say there's no typical day in, in, in my business or engineering. Um, one day I might we might be out surveying poles. Another day we could I could be back at the office ordering equipment, keeping records up to date. And another day we could be out pairing fibre optics or running a new installation, working on the telephone network. It's, it's such a wide variety, there's no particular typical day. At the moment the company are actually training me up. Instead of actually working on the lines, I'll be actually switching, basically becoming an HV engineer. I'm currently at college uh, once a month um, doing a home study course to get me into positions that I can go ahead and, and switch the lines out. I'm also a NVQ trainer for any new linesmen that come on. The company offered me the, the opportunity to become an A1 advisor. If you train as a linesman, there are many opportunities abroad. Um, places like Australia and New Zealand are always crying out for, for a good overhead linesman. If you're young and you're single and you want to travel, it's, it's a very good career to get into. Basically, if you come in, decide you want to go into uh, overhead line work, you would initially do a NVQ3, which would take between three and four years, depending on how much, how good you are, um, and how much experience you gain. And it's mainly practical work, uh, although there are projects you've got to do within that. Um, and once once you've got that, they usually then do a 232 course, which is a, uh, a course in um, electrical engineering, uh, you, um, you basically train in transformers and overhead lines. Because our company has got a little bit smaller, um, we've had to diversify a little bit. Um, and instead of just doing red lines, I now do fibre optic networks um, and a little bit of telecom networks. Um, so I've got a lot more, a wider range of skills. Once you've got your basic you know, engineering skills, there's always opportunities to diversify into other areas. Disadvantages, I guess you might be asked to work out in all weathers um, and you might be asked to be on call. I think um, young people have first of all got to have a good hands-on approach to engineering because that is what engineering is all about um, and really a good willingness to learn off older people that have been in it a long time because they can teach you things that you might not learn in the classroom or you won't learn at school. Final thing is I think the more qualifications, academic qualifications you can get at, at school, at college, university even, before you come into engineering um, stands you in a better stead.
if you've decided on a career in engineering, um, make sure you, you get into it at the earliest stage that you can. Um, if you can find a, a really good company that will sponsor you through college or university, obviously makes it a lot easier um, and you've got a good base then to, to um, get on and, and maybe, you know, not necessarily stay with that company, but at least you've got someone then to, a company that will train you up through and uh, you're able then to further your career with that company or, or somewhere else.